I'm glad that you, your body is stronger with the workout. Otherwise, I don't think you could have done it with this chubby baby. <laughs> just me and this guy today walking to our breakfast meeting this actually feels more like a date with no kids in tow this street that the coffee shops on it's only like a five minute walk from our house the coffee shop but this is the street the parade was on yesterday if that helps you wrap your mind around things at all That's, that's Larry from the truck yesterday. I'm gonna try this. It still doesn't taste like amazing to me. There's been this thing that's going on the last three days where Cannon keeps on saying like, maybe I'm making all this up. Like right now I feel like I'm hungry. I feel like I'm kind of right on the brink of like feeling bad, but I'm not feeling bad. Now I'm ready to talk business. We just hit a home run with that meeting. A lot of these meetings have not felt very productive, but this, this meeting, Cammie helped me schedule time to write my book. We figured out how to create a music station for the kids. We scheduled a social media class for the kids. And most importantly, <clears throat> we scheduled a weekly time for me with each of the older kids. This has been a hard thing. Growing up, there was ways that Cammy and I, we didn't really feel, I don't know how to say this. I'm constantly wondering how much time to invest in the kids and, and I want my kids to each feel like I know them and I care about them individually. I've decided I want to try and meet with each child once a week as kind of a bare minimum. It doesn't need to be like a date night necessarily, but I've noticed with the relationships I care about the most, I meet with them once a week. But I don't know how to do that. So Cami helped me. We're going to be starting at 6 a.m. I think a lot of people think the fewer kids you have or the more time you have, the more you'll be able to prioritize things. That is not true with me. Even like it's crazy that just the thought of Cammy being pregnant, and we don't know if she actually is, is enough to like kick my butt in gear. Like when I have a big trip planned and I have to get, I have like no time, I end up getting a ton done from having a deadline. Uh, I'm way more productive when I have more to do than when I have very little to do. Sometimes I'll sit around all day and not get anything done. And that's how I feel right now with our family is I feel like, I feel the, the pressure in a good way like ratcheting up yeah it's like it's game time so when we just had five kids and our youngest was five we felt like oh we've got this we got this thing in the bag like, this isn't that big of a deal and that's a little bit dangerous place to be so it feels really good it's easy for me to operate with family at a very low bar hey no one's dying our kids haven't run away from home we're good parents. That's one way to look at it. The other is like, it's a war out there. We're gonna fight. We're gonna try and win. We're gonna give it all we got. Mm -hmm. We're gonna leave our blood on the field. We tend to um, gravitate towards the urgent, not the important. Cause I was, I was sitting with someone the other day and just listening to them and I'm like, my 15 year old doesn't have drama in her life to bring me to the point where I'm sitting next to her, listening to her, 
but maybe I'm supposed to be doing that more with her than, than someone else. We want to prioritize and listen to them preventatively to prevent the drama, you know, or the dangerous. Or when the drama hits, as everyone has it, some shape or form, they'll want us there. They'll, we'll be the first people they'll, they'll naturally want to go to. Man, this meeting was so good. Cinnamon crumb muffin for a friend. I'm really excited about reading The Book Thief to my kids and because we've never experienced any hardship like war. And I love reading stuff and exposing my kids to anything that kind of gets us out of our bubble. I'm only a little bit into it and I realize that some of the kids are starting to get excited about reading it. So this is the secret. This is the thing, you guys. The question, what book should you start reading with your kids? Here's the answer. Whatever books you like. Choose ones that you like and bring your kids into it. We always felt guilt that we were supposed to read the right set of books that have the right morals or teach the kids Latin or and whatever. And it's like, no, that. Don't, don't. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> You is it are Tuesday? Welcome. It doesn't feel like Tuesday. It is Tuesday. Yesterday. But we. Julia, I don't want you looking out the window. I want you to sit down. Every morning, just after two o'clock, she fell asleep again to the smell of him. It was a mixture of dead cigarettes, decades of paint, and human skin. I've been editing up in this attic. It is so hot up here. How hot is it? Ah. Uh, look. Can you see that? It says 91. All right, I'm going downstairs. Oh my gosh, it is so nice down here. It feels like it's only 80. <laughs> feels like I'm in air conditioning right now. The thing about spending time with our kids that I've noticed is that when I only had one kid or two kids or three kids, even back then, it didn't feel like I had time because I don't think it really was about time. I think it was about prioritization and ability to connect. But the more kids we've had, ironically, the more we've been able to prioritize and the more capacity we've had to connect with each of them. So even though it's harder in one way, because there's more kids, I actually feel like there's more of myself to give than ever. It's really cool. I don't hear that talked about very much. Oh, is someone ready to be a big brother? Oh, oh, oh. We're going for a run. It's hot and humid today. We're having dinner in the garden. Baby, he turns ah. over, he turns over ones and he scoots and he uh, plays it. Uh, okay, close it. Yeah.
we have a neighbor named Anna who we really like. And she likes us, we think. And but I noticed the last couple of days that something just seemed off. You know, you could just feel it. Um, it was like a week. She, yeah. She didn't say hi like she normally said hi. I was like, what's going on? Cammy came to me and said, Ben, we need to go talk to Anna. And I was like, uh, I didn't want to. I mean, what do you say? Like, hey. Yeah. But I knew she was right. I said, hey, did we do anything to piss you off? And she said, yeah, actually. So we were like, okay, let's hear it. What, what was it? Anna's putting a pool in her backyard. And we were actually pretty excited about it. See, that's where the pool is going to go. But then she told us that the city said that we had complained about the pool. She said that to us and we, and we said, no, we didn't. That wasn't us. We didn't do it. And we told her if we had a problem with it, we would come to you because we have a relationship with you. I think that cleared it up. If we didn't say anything to Anna, this could have gone on for a really long time. The takeaway for me was that, you know, I was just gonna kind of like sit around and um, I didn't want to talk to her and cause a scene and make it weird, but it already was weird, I could tell that. And what I've learned is there's sometimes in relationships when being passive is actually really dangerous and just sitting around and waiting. It's actually more damage is being done. Mm -hmm. And I'm really glad that Cammie kind of spoke up because I didn't really want to do it, but I was really glad afterwards. I was like, oh, that was really the right move. Even though we didn't even do anything, you know? We didn't, there's nothing to apologize for, but just sitting around, damage could be happening. And it takes someone speaking up to kind of like end it. So I don't know, I was thinking maybe you guys know of relationships in your life right now where you didn't really do anything wrong, but just by not speaking truth or love, people are getting hurt. Maybe it's time to just have the courage and speak up and, and end the untruth or the lies. Come on, you ready for this? You ready? Come on, come on. Come on. We have done this with all of our kids. Are you ready? Ready? Stand up. <gasps> oh, right. good job. <laughs> oh, good job, buddy. <laughs>I cannot say anything until my daughter, who is my attorney, is here. Otherwise, I get in trouble. <laughs> Usually, you're not afraid about getting in trouble, though. <laughs> That's with anybody but my kids.